It turns out that, in fact, the book values, which are equation-based, uh, underestimate what the pig's response actually is. And that's been known in the private sector uh, for some time. So we can say that uh, groups such as Hanor, uh, Cargill Animal Nutrition, who's especially expert, in our studies with the modern pig, uh, the pig's growth is greater than expected based on the book values. Um, the best public estimate really is uh, from the University of Illinois, the Sign Lab, where they use the indirect calorimetry, which is the gold standard for net energy. And uh, those values happen to align remarkably well with private sector values. Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, where we explore the science behind swine nutrition. I'm your host, Jorge Estrada, and today in our podcast we have Dr. Dean Boyd. Dr. Boyd is a very well-known nutritionist in our industry. Today, we will discuss, we'll discuss soybean net energy. In principle, in practice, great schism result. Dr. Boyd, hello, welcome to the podcast. It's a pleasure to have you here. Good morning. Thanks for the invitation. Well, most of us in the industry are very familiar with your background. But before we dive into today's topic, could you give us a brief introduction of, about yourself? I have a background in academia as well as in the private sector. So I consider that uh, quite useful. Um, my career began with uh, Cornell University where I studied uh, nutrition and metabolic regulation. Uh, it ended, climax, we might say, with the Hanor Company and Triumph Foods Group. And uh, I was the technical director uh, for Hanor Company and a technical participant for the Triumph Foods Group and was afforded a wonderful commercial research uh, facilities as well as academic facilities. I now have, uh, I hold two adjunct professorships with universities. Excellent, excellent. Thanks for that, Dr. Boyd. And then today, you know, there has been a lot of discussion around this topic, net energy of, of soybean meal. So let's, let's, let's dig into this. You have stated that book values for soybean meal net energy underestimate its real value. Uh, what, what's the basis of your statement there? I'm going to say up front that this uh, story of soybean net energy is really a tale of two sides of the same coin. And uh, my reference to book values was to the classic substrate NE values that you provide for each of the ingredients. And uh, it turns out that in fact, the book values, which are equation-based, uh, underestimate what the pig's response actually is. And that's been known in the private sector uh, for some time. So we can say that uh, groups such as Hanor, uh, Cargill Animal Nutrition, who's especially expert, in our studies with the modern pig, uh, the pig's growth is greater than expected based on the book values. Um, the best public estimate really is uh, from the University of Illinois, the Sign Lab, where they use the indirect calorimetry, which is the gold standard for net energy. And uh, those values happen to align remarkably well with private sector values. And I'm following up on, on that question, you know, uh, out of those estimates from the University of Illinois, uh, why do you believe that's, that's happening? I mean, why, why are those estimates different compared to others, right? I want to emphasize that the book values, which um, scientific groups have studiously and meticulously handled, 
um, have been accurately handled. But um, it's been over 30 years since the equation has developed. A couple of things that we note is if you're using one of the equations and start out with digestible energy, the Stein Lab has enormous amount of data to show that the digestible energy value in the book is low by today's standards. And uh, secondly, uh, you, as you might expect, uh, the pig's composition has changed over time. Jorge, back in uh, the early 90s, compared to today, the total mass of lipid or fat in a pig's body is down over 40%. So the ingredient value, uh, ingredient composition can define the net energy, but also I expect, we expect, that the pig's composition can also define how useful that ingredient is uh, to the animal. So the pig's composition is remarkably different. Things change, and it doesn't mean the equations were, weren't right at the time. They just don't fit now. And at the end of the day, the pig growth assay simply says they're not quite a fit. And let me, let me step back just for a second. So that way I make sure I don't misunderstand your point. So you're saying that the Euro of Illinois estimate, you know, is being determined while the international and reference values are calculated out of that initial digestible energy. Is that correct, Dr. Roy? That is correct. Yes. The, not only University of Illinois, uh, but now uh, the uh, DFA Li lab in China are also using indirect calorimetry uh, to reassess the net energy value uh, of ingredients. And so, uh, indeed, the, those two labs indicate that soybean has greater value than previously estimated uh, using the equations. Fortiva is moving beyond feed additives to create foundational ingredients that work with your pig's physiology to support resilience and health. With proven technologies like Ambitine, Flow Matrix, and Endura, Fortiva helps you address the toughest challenges in swine production. From gut health to growth performance, together we can make animals more resilient in the face of future challenges. Learn how at FortivaImpact.com. Excellent. So are there any other estimates, you know, from the public and private sectors that agree with the University of Illinois soybean meal net energy? I mean, you just mentioned one of them, of course, but. Well, uh, there are indeed. Uh, first of all, uh, the, the University of Illinois estimates, I'm specifically referring to the indirect calorimetry estimates, but since the uh, publication of the 212 NRC, uh, Hans Stein Lab has evaluated the net energy for over 25 samples of soybean meal. They found uh, samples, obtained samples from four regions. And so in their own shop, they have quite a substantial amount of data showing that the value for NE is higher based on current pig's response. And we have actually published that in, uh, it's, it's peer reviewed by us, by people we select, but it's in a feedstuffs article that I can refer you to at the end. A feedstuffs article, that information appears there. Secondly, that an expert, a global expert on a net energy uh, is Cargill Animal Nutrition, perhaps uh, some know it as Pravimi. They have a comprehensive uh, show of data that they've had for 10 or 15 years to show that the value of soybean meal has been uh, higher than the book estimates. So that 
and I've worked with them and their values are, they have a substantial database. And then as we've stated, DFA Lee uh, Lab is also uh, doing estimates as well. Groups like Honor, uh, Mashoffs, you probably know about Mashoffs. <laughs> um, when you're feeding uh, two to three, four, five million pigs a year, you cannot guess at how the pig truly values the various ingredients for net energy. And so within those groups, you have smart, capable PhD nutritionists, scientists that have learned that they can use assays that in all frankness have been used in the private industry since the mid eighties uh, to get at the true energy value for an ingredient. And so, that from the private sector, there's a good bit of unearthed uh, information, but the Honor information has been made available. So, no, we appreciate that, Dr. Boyd, and uh, we will try to include some of the of, of these resources in in our channels uh, in the comment in the comment section for our mm -hmm. listeners. So, we will look forward to see you next time. <laughs>